Membranous nephropathy is a common cause of nephrotic syndrome. It has undergone tremendous changes in the last 20 years, in particularly with regards to understanding the etiology of membranous nephropathy. This is now reflected in the consensus manuscript. So I am Sanjeev Sethi. I am one of the renal pathologists at the Mayo Clinic, and I participated in writing this manuscript. And my name is Fernando Forvenza. I am a nephrologist at Mayo Clinic, and my area of interest is glomerular disease. And uh, together with Sanjeev, we managed to put together uh, this uh, consensus meeting. In the title of the manuscript, the Mayo Clinic Consensus Report on Members of Property, a proposal for a new classification. To be published in October 5th online and in the November issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. So, members of property for the longest time was mostly a disease entity of unknown etiology. And then in 2009, uh, Dr. Larry Beck and Dr. David Salant published a manuscript on an antigen called PLA2R. And this uh, was a seminal paper in that uh, for the first time an antigen in membranous nephropathy was detected. In 2014, a second antigen called thrombospondin 7A was discovered. Together, PLA2R and thrombospondin 7A accounted for about 60% of all of membranous nephropathy. After the discovery of these two antigens, there was a sort of lull for about five to six years. Then here at the Mayo Clinic, mostly we, and along with some of our colleagues, discovered seven to eight more novel antigens. Some of these antigens were specifically related to certain disease entities associated with membranous nephropathy, such as lupus, such as hematopoietic stem cell transplant, drugs, infections, and so on. So now we have close to about 10 to 12 antigens in membranous nephropathy. This manuscript now details these antigens that are related to membranous nephropathy. Together, we have now been able to describe an uh, underlying antigen in close to 90% of membranous nephropathy cases. So the reason we were able to find these antigens in membranous nephropathy is because we employed a technique called laser microdissection and mass spectrometry. Basically, what we were able to do was we were able to take membranous nephropathy cases dissect the glomeruli that were affected by the membranous nephropathy, and then using sophisticated mass spectrometry techniques, we were able to identify the underlying antigen in various uh, membranous nephropathy cases. So this was very unique to the Mayo Clinic. Well, this uh, findings and the proposal for the new classification has fundamental uh, impact on patients' care because now, uh, we went from a disease that until uh, over 20 years ago we were considered an unknown cause to now we have this cadre of antigens that we can uh, link what is the cause of the disease. And as Dr. Seti uh, 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 alluded to, uh, some of them already can tell you the predictability um, if the patient is going to go, let's say, in a sort of spontaneous remission or this patient is going to need further treatment with immunosuppressive therapy. So classifying uh, uh, these patients adequately is also crucial because some of those antigens, for example, are associated with malignancy. So if you find one of them, then immediately comes to, uh, to your mind that this patient needs further evaluation. While others, um, we can are uh, associated with likelihood that they are a benign course and going to be a spontaneous remission. So we went from uh, the time when your renal biopsy just showed members nephropathy in the, the story to now where you can say, no, this is member nephropathy, but this is this type of member nephropathy, and this is what is going to, how you should evaluate this patient and how you should uh, treat this patient. So one of the, uh, the things that's missing here, so we were able to use uh, laser microcapture, microdissection, mass spectrometry, and then we were able to show using Western blot analysis that indeed this is a particular antigen that is causing, or that is the target antigen in membranous property. But what is missing really are serologic tests now. We need to be able to develop serologic-based tests so that we can detect the antibodies to these specific target antigens in circulation, be able to monitor them over time to, to sort of look at the efficacy of treatment. Uh, and that is what is missing. So I think in the future, the next three to five years is gonna be critical to develop serologic tests for these particular antigens. 
Keep in mind that serologic tests for PLA2R are available and clinicians use them uh, all the time to, to determine whether the drugs have been efficacious or not. Is that correct? As well as the diagnosis. Yeah. We can use the antibody to diagnosis, which is in a certain group of patients, will uh, preclude the need of performing a kidney biopsy. Yes, and so all of this is now in, given in detail in the consensus manuscript. Uh, close to 40 nephrologists and pathologists met at the Mayo Clinic. We had intense two days of discussions, and uh, now all of this has been put together in a cutting-edge, up-to-date manuscript on the antigens in membranous nephropathy. Uh, we hope you will find the manuscript uh, of, of use. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.